Hey y'all, thank you for tuning in. Jed's here and today we're just going to go over my Chinese diesel heater. So, uh, this install, I was running propane uh, in the inside of my shed and uh, I decided this year that I've been kind of changed my shed and turned into a studio, um, you know, so I can, you know, use it as an office and a living space instead of just filled with motorcycle junk and dirt and stuff. So, uh, while I'm in there more, I've realized that I'm burning through propane fast. So I was like, what am I going to do? So I kind of looked around. Everyone's been using these diesel heaters and, um, they're pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of great videos out there, a lot of information. Um, mine's a five kilowatt diesel heater. So I bought this tractor supply truck toolbox for 50 bucks used. Uh, it doesn't have the keys. That's why I got it for 50 bucks. Uh, in here you can see I've got my diesel heater set up. Uh, you've got duct work that goes right into the shed. So this is my hot. This is my intake cold. Um, and basically it goes in and this is a five kilowatt diesel heater. I got the kit from Amazon for a hundred bucks. Uh, it didn't come with the big box. Um, you can tell you're like, well, where's the fuel? And I'll show you that in just a second. So right now I'm using a 12 volt system. So it's piggyback. So the primary pole comes off this little lithium ion battery and it's piggybacked to this secondary motorcycle battery in line with this deep cycle Econo Star 770 cranking amp tractor battery. And as you can tell, there's two big cables that flow through to an old Toyota Tundra battery. This is a seven, I believe a 710 cold cranking amps. I'm gonna have this set up to have two jumper cables out so that I can start like the gold wing or the car or the monkey side, monkey hack. So, uh, and also, as you can see here, this is just a um, charger, trickle charger, so I can plug in to the monkey or to any of my vehicles that have uh, trickle charger and trickle charge off this battery pack. Ideally, what I'm gonna do is have an inverter and then this will be a backup supply for 110 volt inside of the shop. Uh, you see using a six amp trickle charge built in charger. This is an Amazon purchase, um, not the, the best charger. Uh, it likes to like throw, you know, check battery terminals and stuff every six hours. So I'm going to put a timer on this. So it will, every three hours, it will turn the unit off for 15 minutes and turn it back on. So it will always be charging, either going to trickle mode or charging mode. So when it's in yellow, it's at six amps. When we're in the green, it's a three amp uh, supply. Uh, I was using a two amp trickle charger for this setup originally just for testing purposes and I had a pretty hacked kind of job but it was more of a try to make it work kind of situation as you can see uh, this is just three inch uh, ducting I got it was pretty cheap on Amazon uh, I've changed out all the fuel lines I did not use the green lines that came with it I'm using a little inline fuel filter that was not included in the kit because the kit was just a mesh and I wanted something on paper so it could filter a lot better. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's a high pressure uh, fuel pump, uh, you know, fuel pump line. And uh, as you can tell, it goes out and my, my fuel source to go around here is this old 55 gallon olive oil drum or canola oil drum. Uh, it holds 55 gallons of fuel. I put in about 30 gallons and I'm now at uh, 25 gallons. The unit's been running for several days. So uh, consumption right now, I have it on high altitude mode. So uh, it's consumption is probably about a gallon a day, maybe a little less than that uh, if I turn it down. Uh, but when I have it cranking, it will, you know, get about maybe a gallon, less than a gallon, but on average is about a gallon a day. So I've got about a month's worth of supply of fuel here, which is what I wanted so I can put two months in. Uh, the reason I went from the 100 gallon propane is that when I have to get this filled, I have to bring it in. So you're moving a 130 pound cylinder filled with propane. So the diesel just makes life so much easier from transporting fuel instead of having to hassle with this giant 130 pound propane cylinder 
which is also so safe to deal with, you can just deal with five gallon jerry cans and slowly pump out the fuel you need. Just way easier. As you can see here, this is my T. So uh, what I do is I hook up my vacuum pump on this and then I will open this valve and bring it up to the highest point and it'll create a vacuum in the line. And then basically you get a, uh, a siphon effect. So uh, with the pump running, you have the siphon from the tank. This thing has ran several days, never ran out of fuel. I've got this, uh, I'm not running the muffler. The muffler, muffler caught on fire when I first got it. Uh, so uh, you got the exhaust coming out of it. It's a nice all metal container. So if something ever went awry, um, it's contained in this metal container and there's no grounding on the container itself. So there's no accidental, um, there's no means of accidentally grounding out. And this is what it sounds like with it shut. As you can tell, there's really, you can hear a little bit of the tick of the, the fuel pump. If you want to go inside, we can show you the control panels. I have the propane heater on and now it's great because I actually still use the propane heater. Uh, but it's really there for pop, you know, get some heat in here. Still using, but I'm not using nearly as much propane. I only use it like to fire it to get the, the space warm. And this is our little control panel here. As you can tell, this has been running for a while and it's not hot at all. So it's a good spot for it. I had it on the wall. The problem was with it on the wall. You couldn't see the, the LCD. You have to like look at it from a, an, a downway angle. Like I said, these things aren't awesome. They're cheap and uh, you, you pay, you get one for you what you pay for, but doesn't mean it's not going to do a good job. And this thing is actually pretty good. So um, uh, running out 3.4 Hertz. And this is because of high altitude mode. So it's like 3.4 out of five. Um, I can run it higher, but I actually find that this is the primo setup. I really like, so I'll show you my settings. All these diesel heaters have basically the same code. And that is one, six, eight, eight. Okay. So low mode is 1.1 Hertz. High is 3.4 Hertz. Low fan speed of 1700. High fan speed of 4500. 12 volt system, SN on one, PF on six, OF. And that has been the best setup for me. I find that this thing produces the most reliable heat um, I, and when I came, when I ran it with the stock settings, it smoked really bad and it used to smoke on startup. And then sometimes it would just smoke and then, I, and then the muffler caught on fire and, uh, it was bad. So, uh, yeah, it seems to work great. So that's my setup guys. This is how I heat my shop. You know, like, uh, that's where my little garage, this is the, don't mind the mess guys. It's pretty messy in here, but it works and it's a pretty cool little setup and uh, I think uh, I think it's gonna work well for me in the long run thanks for tuning in if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below and uh, if you like it like it and if you want to see more uh, videos pertaining to my diesel heater uh, please send me a message thanks for tuning in have an awesome day and uh, we'll see you when we see you